The story begins in a bike store, where an elderly grandfather and his enthusiastic granddaughter are searching for the perfect bicycle. She has her heart set on a blue one, but the store has none left in stock. The shop owner assures them they'll have one available the next day. As soon as the grandfather and granddaughter depart, the shop owner hatches a plan. He reaches out to his team with a sneaky request. They need to find a blue bicycle. Taking this as a directive, his team spots and subsequently steals a blue bike parked near a school, unbeknownst to them, owned by a young girl named Matilda. The subsequent day is a mix of ups and downs for Matilda. She discovers her cherished bicycle missing, leaving her heartbroken. If that wasn't enough, her daily ride to school, courtesy of her mother's old car, is fraught with constant breakdowns. In the midst of their journey, her mom receives a phone call from Marcus, Matilda's dad. Marcus is far away, serving as a soldier in the Middle East. He delivers the unfortunate news that his return will be delayed by another three months, intensifying Matilda's longing for him. In a completely different setting, Otto and Lennart, two colleagues working in a marketing division, are in a tight spot. Their recent presentation at their workplace didn't impress, resulting in both of them losing their jobs. As the day wears on, Otto finds himself commuting back home on a train, lost in thought. His observations wander from the peculiar, like someone nonchalantly discarding untouched food, to the potentially ominous, a tattoo-covered man whose intense demeanor sets him apart from the rest of the passengers. On another note, Matilda and her mother started using the train because their car wasn't working. On one of these train rides, Otto saw them standing and kindly offered his seat. However, tragedy struck soon after. The train met with an accident. Many passengers, including Matilda's mother, lost their lives. Miraculously, Otto and Matilda suffered only minor injuries. After the accident in the hospital, Otto noticed the grief-stricken Matilda, heartbroken over the loss of her mom. The sad news about Matilda's mother also reached Marcus, who was far away on duty. Given the circumstances, he was granted permission to return to Denmark. Once back, he was consumed with guilt, feeling he wasn't there to protect his family because of his state duties. Grief-stricken, he headed straight to the hospital to see his late wife. Although the doctors tried to dissuade him due to the severe condition of his wife's body, fearing it would deeply traumatize him, Marcus was determined to see her one last time. In the meantime, Otto closely followed the news updates regarding the train accident, and a particular detail caught his attention. The tattooed man he had previously observed on the train was revealed to be Eagle, a prominent gang leader. Sadly, Eagle was among those who didn't make it out alive. The news further detailed an ongoing feud between Eagle's gang and a rival faction named Justice. This information made Otto ponder the events leading up to the accident. He vividly remembered witnessing a peculiar scene, a man hastily discarding untouched food before abruptly exiting the train. Otto couldn't help but wonder if there was a correlation between the discarded food and the subsequent tragedy. Feeling a sense of responsibility, Otto reached out to the police to share his observations and theories. He presented the idea that the untouched food might have contained a substance or device that contributed to the catastrophic accident. Furthermore, Otto proposed that the Justice Gang, given their known animosity towards Eagle, might have had a hand in orchestrating the entire incident, with the primary objective of eliminating their formidable rival. The police were skeptical of Otto's claims, believing that he might be experiencing delusions due to the trauma from the accident. They felt that his theories were far-fetched, lacking concrete evidence. Undeterred by their doubts, Otto sought out Leonard, his tech-savvy best friend. He wanted Leonard to hack into the train's database to uncover any details about the man who had discarded the untouched food. Otto was convinced that this clue was the key to understanding the cause of the disaster. However, the police later announced that the crash was the result of technical malfunctions, not foul play. In the wake of the accident, Matilda was devastated by the loss of her mother. While Marcus shared her grief, he tried to stay strong for his daughter's sake. One evening, Marcus was unexpectedly approached by Otto and Leonard. Leonard had already delved into the database of the train accident victims. Through his hacking, he discovered Marcus's identity as a member of the Danish Special Forces. Otto filled Marcus in on the tragic event, 
explaining that he too was a survivor and shared the belief that the accident wasn't just a mere technical glitch, but a premeditated act. They both hoped that with Marcus's expertise, they could delve deeper into the mystery surrounding the accident. While Marcus, intrigued and fueled by the desire for answers, led them to a secluded warehouse to discuss the matter further. Once there, Otto laid out all the details. He spoke of the mysterious man who discarded an item right before the tragedy, and of Eagle, the formidable gang leader who might have been the prime target of a larger conspiracy. He shared his disappointment in the police's reluctance to investigate his theories, feeling that they dismissed him too quickly. Marcus was now fueled by a new purpose. The idea that his wife's tragic demise wasn't just a simple accident, but potentially a part of something bigger, ignited a fire within him. He was determined to uncover the truth and bring those responsible to justice, no matter the obstacles. Their primary lead was the grainy CCTV image of a man discarding untouched food just moments before the accident. While the clue seemed insignificant to many, Otto and Leonard believed it held the key. To decipher the identity of this mystery man, they reached out to an old acquaintance, Ament. With his round figure and unassuming appearance, Ament seemed an unlikely tech genius. However, his skills in hacking and digital forensics were unmatched. With the screenshot in hand, the trio spent hours trying to match the face with any known databases. The process was arduous, and the results were frustratingly elusive. As time ticked away, Leonard's patience waned. He proposed that they should lower the facial recognition search accuracy threshold from the standard 98% to 95%, hoping it might speed up the process. Emmett was initially reluctant, warning them about the risks of misidentification with reduced accuracy. But Leonard's persistence won out, and Emmett reluctantly agreed to adjust the parameters. To their astonishment, reducing the accuracy yielded a result. The face matched with a known individual, Pell, the younger sibling of Tandem, who headed the Justice Gangster Group. This discovery bolstered Otto's initial theory. It seemed more likely than ever that the train catastrophe was a meticulously planned operation to eliminate Eagle, the chief adversary of the Justice Gang, hound by Tandem. The pieces of the puzzle were beginning to fall into place. Marcus was already under an enormous amount of stress with the ongoing investigation and the loss of his wife. His concern grew when he noticed Matilda wasn't home even though it was getting late. When she finally arrived with Sergi, Marcus's immediate reaction was protective, asking Matilda to come inside. However, when Sergi threw a disrespectful comment Marcus's way, all the pent-up tension exploded, leading Marcus to strike Sergi. This impulsive act only worsened the situation. Matilda was livid, siding with her boyfriend and condemning her father's violent reaction. Marcus soon recognized the gravity of his actions and tried to make amends, but the damage was done. Matilda, feeling a mix of anger and disappointment, retreated to her room, leaving Marcus in a pool of regret. After a restless night, Marcus decided to take the initiative to mend things. The following morning, as Matilda was heading out, Marcus requested her to bring Sergi home after school. He wanted to apologize to the young man personally, while also taking the opportunity to better understand who his daughter was dating. It was a step towards healing the rift between father and daughter, as well as setting things right with Sergi. Shortly after, Marcus, Otto, Leonard, and Emmett, with their newfound information, decided to directly confront Pell, believing that they might be able to get more answers about the train incident. Arriving at Pell's residence, they were quickly made aware of the danger they had walked into. Pell's immediate aggressive response, gun in hand, made it clear that they were treading on hostile grounds. While the group initially complied with Pell's demand to leave, Marcus, driven by his anguish over his wife's death and frustration over Pell's attitude, acted impulsively. In a sudden surge of fury, he overpowered and killed Pell. Lenart and Otto stared in disbelief at Marcus's rash move. Imant, who had a deep-seated disdain for the gangster community, felt a mix of satisfaction and surprise. Recognizing the gravity of their situation, Lenart, thinking on his feet, decided to clean up the scene to erase any evidence of their presence, particularly Marcus's fingerprints. But while searching for cleaning supplies, Lenart stumbled upon an even more disturbing scene, 
a man held captive. The shock of this discovery made him abandon the initial plan of cleaning up. Panicked, he raced to the car, leaving behind all traces of their visit. In the evening, Matilda arranged for Sergi to have dinner with her and her father, Marcus. During their meal, Matilda couldn't help but notice the significant changes in Marcus since his return from the military. This transformation became more pronounced after the untimely demise of her mother. Concerned about his mental well-being, she suggested he might benefit from professional therapy. However, Marcus was dismissive of the idea. He attributed his behavior and demeanor to the rigorous training he underwent in the army. After dinner, as he relaxed in front of the television, a news report caught his attention. The segment detailed the nefarious activities of the Justice Gang. The gang's ruthlessness toward civilians was highlighted, and even more disturbing was the revelation that they seemed to operate with impunity, likely due to connections within the Danish government. This news ignited a fire within Marcus. The tragedy that had befallen his wife now seemed intertwined with the Justice Gang. The very next morning, he summoned Otto, Lennart, and Ament to his residence. His intention was clear. He wanted information on every member of the Justice Gang. His aim was to exact revenge for the pain they had presumably inflicted upon his family. While Lennart and Emmett were immediately on board with the plan, Otto had reservations. The sheer gravity of Marcus's proposal concerned him, as he foresaw potential complications down the line. Yet under pressure from Lennart and Emmett, Otto eventually concurred. The quartet then proceeded to Emmett's abode, the ideal place to begin their investigation. Their efforts were briefly interrupted when Matilda returned home from school and almost spotted them. Recognizing the potential danger, Otto quickly hid, especially since Matilda might have recalled his presence on the ill-fated train. Lennart, ever the quick thinker, stepped in. He introduced himself and Emmett to Matilda as therapists, implying that they were there in response to her earlier suggestion for her father. Relieved and grateful, Matilda accepted this explanation. For the time being, Lennart played the role of a therapist, attentively listening to the concerns Matilda expressed about her father's state of mind. Meanwhile, Tandem, the chief of the Justice Gangsters, was trying to get to the bottom of his younger brother Pell's death. He turned to Badaska, the man once held by Pell, for answers. From Badaska, he got a lead, the name Ament. Determined to find out who this Ament was, Tandem dispatched his gang members to score the city for him. Marcus, Otto, Lennart, and Ament were, at this time, deeply engrossed in their research into the Justice Gang's members. They were working out of a warehouse near Marcus's home to avoid Matilda's prying eyes. However, they faced a minor hiccup. Marcus's computer was painfully slow. Ament suggested fetching his faster computer from his house, but as Marcus, Otto, and Lennart reached Ament's place, they walked into a trap. Members of the Justice Gang were already there, lying in wait. Although initially caught off guard, Marcus's military training kicked in. He swiftly and efficiently dealt with the gang members, using his combat skills. Amidst this commotion, they discovered Bodaska, trapped inside one of the gang members' cars. Marcus, recognizing an ally when he saw one, promptly freed him and took him to the safety of his own residence. After the close encounter at Immense House, Marcus felt it was safer to have everyone stay at his place. With the events of the night unraveling before her, Matilda came to understand her father's mission for revenge. Instead of condemning his actions, she quietly accepted them. Realizing that their enemies were formidable, Marcus decided that everyone needed to be prepared for potential confrontations. The next day, he began training Otto, Lennart, and Immint in the art of shooting. It was essential that they knew how to defend themselves against Tandem's gang. Elsewhere, Tandem was seething with rage over the loss of his brother, Pell. With the names of the culprits in hand, he was determined to seek vengeance. However, finding Marcus and his team proved to be challenging, as his gang members struggled to track them down. While Matilda, over the days, found herself bonding with Marcus's friends, particularly Otto. However, unknown to her, her boyfriend, Sergi, posted a picture of her and Otto on Instagram, potentially stoking misunderstandings. On the other side, immense tech skills came in handy when he successfully hacked into a phone belonging to a member of the Justice Gang. 
The information he uncovered revealed that several gang members planned to meet at a local bar. Deciding to use this information to their advantage, Marcus and his team set up outside the bar, lying in wait for the right moment. As the gangsters started leaving, Marcus sprung into action, swiftly neutralizing most of them. Imant, while wanting to be a part of the action, found himself hesitating when faced with the reality of taking a life. Seeing Imant's struggle, Marcus stepped in and took care of the last gangster himself. Later on, Tandem was in a meeting with his frantic gang members when his daughter stumbled upon a video of Otto on Sergi's Instagram. It was a twist of fate as Tandem's daughter went to the same school as Sergi, Matilda's boyfriend. Meanwhile, Lenart was deep in conversation with Badaska, trying to uncover how he got tangled up with the likes of Pell. It was a heartbreaking tale. Badaska revealed he had been sold into prostitution by his own mother. Lenart, curious, asked Badaska if he knew about the infamous train accident. Badaska confirmed that he was aware, as the tragedy was well known throughout Denmark. However, he added that during the time of the accident, he and Pell were in Germany. This revelation left Lenart in shock. They had attacked and killed the wrong person. It meant dug deeper into the system and found that the real culprit behind the accident was not Pell. He confessed that the mistake likely arose from the decision to reduce the photo identification accuracy to 95%. The news was a heavy blow to Marcus. He was already wrestling with the guilt of taking a life, and now he realized that the life he took was innocent. To make matters worse, they were now on the radar of Denmark's most notorious gang. Overwhelmed with guilt and frustration, Marcus headed straight to the bathroom and took out his anger on everything in sight. The noise attracted Otto, who quickly came in, trying to soothe his troubled friend. In a surprising twist, it turned out that the man who had spilled food on the train was a Turkish worker from the train station. And as investigations unfolded, it became clear that the tragic train accident was a mere technical glitch and not a deliberate act of sabotage. At the same time, Tandem and his gangsters were on a mission to find Otto. They zeroed in on Sergi, believing he had information. After enduring relentless torture, Sergi finally gave in, revealing Otto's whereabouts to save himself. With this information, Tandem's group stormed Marcus's house. They came close to fatally harming Matilda, but Marcus, ever the protective father, managed to save her. In the ensuing chaos, however, he took a bullet. In the intense face-off, Marcus instructed Matilda to find a hiding spot while he confronted the gangsters from justice. Despite his best efforts, Matilda was seized by tandem, leaving Marcus in a dire situation. He found himself cornered and ready to negotiate for his daughter's life, pleading with Tandem and his men to spare her. As the tension peaked, just as Tandem was about to take out Marcus, Otto and the team stormed in. Bullets flew, the atmosphere thick with gun smoke and chaos. One by one, the gangsters fell under the barrage, leaving only Tandem standing amidst the chaos. A showdown between Marcus and Tandem ensued. Just when things seemed bleak, a gunshot rang out, taking down Tandem. But the victory was bittersweet, as Matilda had been caught in the crossfire. Despite being injured himself, Marcus's only concern was his daughter. Scooping her up, he waited, hoping against hope that help would arrive in time for both of them. Several months after the intense showdown, the festive season of Christmas brought a calm and reflective atmosphere to the group. Marcus, Matilda, Sergi Otto, and the rest came together to celebrate. The bond between Marcus and Otto's group had grown stronger due to their shared experiences, with Marcus now seeing them as an extension of his own family. Their loyalty had been proven time and again, especially when they ensured that no evidence from the encounter with Tandem's gang could be traced back to Marcus. The movie's conclusion offers a heartwarming scene. An old man, possibly a symbol of hope and kindness throughout the chaos, is seen buying a blue bicycle for his granddaughter. This is no ordinary bicycle, but the very same one that once belonged to Matilda. It's a gentle nod to how the whole chaotic journey began, reminding the viewers of the interconnectedness of events and choices in life. The blue bicycle, once a trigger for a series of chaotic events, is now a symbol of renewal, hope, and the spirit of Christmas. 
The moral of the story is a blue bicycle can lead to unexpected adventures, so choose your wheels wisely.